Hello, this is a lesson for Year 12 students. It is uh, exercise 21D. Uh, follows on more from what we've done in class. So um, this is uh, an attempt to look at Newton's second law, but now with gravity coming into play because we're going to use forces acting in the up and down direction. So we have to take account of the fact that when Earth things fall, fall to the ground, um, they will fall at a set rate. Um, so anyway, uh, some of you probably should know this, but just in case, um, there is a difference, and I'm just going to set my pen, there is a difference between mass and weight, and most people don't understand it in the real world, but we as mathematicians need to be able to do so. So um, mass is not weight. Let's get that done first of all. So if you say what you weigh to be 8 stone or 50 kilograms maybe, then that would be wrong. You, what you really mean is that it's your mass is 8 stone or 50 kilograms. Um, and to find your weight, you have to use Newton's second law. Now, we've seen Newton's second law before. Newton's second law says F equals MA, or that weight equals mass times gravitational constant. And when I say the gravitational constant, it's really the fact that the, um, the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, more or less all over the Earth, depends, it does change slightly depending on whereabouts on the Earth you are, but broadly it's the same. And uh, that figure in mathematics is taken to be a value of 9.8 meters per second squared. So if someone asks you what their weight is, really what you should do is say, well, first of all, what's their mass? And once you know their mass, you can work out the weight. In this particular case, we've got the weight equals the mass times the um, the gravity uh, acceleration due to gravity if I'm up here. So it's 50 times by 9.8, as I've just told you. And 50 times by 9.8 is 490 newtons, if you do it on your calculator. Now 490 newtons is um, about right for someone of um, average weight. So this... Um, acceleration due to gravity you need to write it as a little g little g not a big g big g means something completely different regarding gravitation and its value is 9.8 meters per second squared so there you go confirmation that the value is 490 newtons now this question then we're going to draw it on the next slide an injured seaman is being winched up to a rescue helicopter the mass of the seaman is 55 so this is some guy on board a ship a sailor and he's got a mass of 55, but for some reason he's going to be winched up, presumably being rescued in one of those dramatic um, at-sea rescues from the helicopter jobs. So let's just make a note of the fact he's got, there's a tension on this um, sailor, and um, he's being winched up, or she's being winched up. Um, at a steady speed, there's two different versions, a steady speed of 4 and an acceleration of eight, uh, 0.8. Uh, so let's just do the first one. Oops, you do not meant to see the answers. I think, I, well, at least we know what the answers are meant to be at the end. So um, the first one, if I just draw this picture here, we've got the person, that's the person as a mass, they said at 55. There's a cable running upwards. And this cable that runs upwards has, we call it a tension. The force applied by a rope, a cable, a piece of string, all those are the same. It's got a tension pulling it up. And coming down from here, we've got a weight, and that's always written with a capital W. Now, the great thing about weight is we can use our formula, weight equals mg, and in this case, that is 55 times by 9.8. Now, if you do that sum on your calculator, you get 539 newtons. Now, notice the first example, it said to us that it was, it was get, moving at a constant speed. Just go back, we can see that at a steady speed of 4. The 4 actually means nothing. What matters is the fact it's a steady speed. So because it's a steady speed, we can say that A equals 0. And because at the acceleration is 0, we can just assume that the force is up equals the force is down. T is equal to W, and therefore the tension is 539 newtons. And of course it says down here for tension is 539 newtons, so that's the answer. The second picture is actually exactly the same. Oh, I'm drawing slightly sideways here. That's my worst rectangle ever. Let's try and make it a bit more like a, a proper rectangle, marginally better. So we've got 55 inside it. And we've still got a weight. We've still got a tension. So nothing's really changed other than they tell us A equals. 
And if we just go back, it says a equals 0 0.8. So I need to write here a equals 0 0.8. And um, we do the same thing. We still know that this is 539. That's not changed. What's changed is we can no longer just use this expression over here, that t equals w. t is only equal to w when the two forces are in equilibrium. Here we have to use the magical, and we, we use it so often that you should get good at this, f equals ma. Now, the acceleration, it hasn't said it's positive, uh, positive or negative, but I'm going to assume it's going upwards. Otherwise, they would have said it was being, he was being dropped, and of course he's being winched upwards, I'm assuming. So, assuming he's going upwards, um, this person, um, we can now say that uh, the, the forces, well, the force up is T, we take away the W, because that's coming down in the opposite direction, and that equals MA. That equals the mass times by 0.8. Now, we've got a bit of information over here. T minus, the weight is not changed. His weight is 539. What's different is the tension that's required to pull him up whilst accelerating. And that's the bit that's slightly different. So on the calculator now, I'm just doing 55 times by 0.8. And I get 44. So this answer here is 44. And when I move this over, T presumably is 5. 183 newtons. Sorted. So here's another question. A pebble of mass 0.2 kilograms is dropped into water. Now, the dropping into water is fine. Um, but one thing that people always get slightly confused by is once you drop a pebble, the only force acting on it, if assuming we ignore the resistance, air resistance, the only force acting on it is the force due to gravity, the acceleration due to gravity. So if I just draw it, it's got a mass of 0 0.2, it says. So here's my pebble. There you go. I'm a talented arts, uh, arts uh, person, even as you can see. Artist, I think is the word. Anyway, the only force acting on it is its weight. Um, if we just go back a step, what's it say? It says, find the acceleration of the pebble as it falls, assuming the pebble falls with constant resistance. Oh, all right, it has got a resistance. Right, so slightly surprised by that, but there you go. We've got a resistance as it falls. So we'll mark that with a f for friction. And again, it might, it might be better if I just write the fr for friction, just to clarify exactly what it is. And again, because it's got an acceleration, what does it say? Assuming that, find the acceleration of the pebble as it falls. That's what I actually want to find. I want to know this acceleration. It's not the normal acceleration due to gravity, because it's being slowed down. So if I write f equals ma, there are two forces at W minus the friction equals the mass times the acceleration. Now, what is W equal to? Of course, we've said weight of something is its mass times by 9.8. Now, if I do that, I think I get 1.9. Let me just check it. 0 0.2 times 9.8 is 1.96. There you go. I know it's something like that. So, 1.96 newtons. And I can chuck that in over here, because now I know that 1.96 newtons minus the friction equals the mass times the acceleration. Ah, that's what, of course, I'm trying to do. Now, did they tell me what the friction was? I think they did. Constant resistance force of 0 0.06. So now I can go 1.96 minus, well, I'll just add it up here, 0 0.06. Uh, minus that 0 0.06 equals 0.2a. That's obviously 1.9 equals 0.2a. And if I do 1.9 divided by the 0.2, the answer I get on my calculator now is 0 0.5, uh, 9.5, uh, 9 sorry, 9.5 meters per second squared. And this down here looks like 9.5. I can't quite see it. It's blurred out on my screen. So hopefully we're okay with that question. But one more question, and then I'm going to leave it to you to have a play with. And this is a, a strange question, because this is different to normal, in as much as it says. We've got a spaceman on the moon. And, of course, on the moon, gravita gravity is different. We often see these sort of uh, pictures. And if you look at this guy here, he's jumping up and down. And I suppose he's emphasizing the fact that once he's jumped up, he slowly comes down again. And that's because on small bodies, of course... 
gravity is caused by the size of the thing you're stood on. That's the thing that perhaps we don't appreciate in what we do here. And um, on a small moon, gravity will be less. And I suppose this question is all about how much less will it be on the moon uh, than it would have been on Earth. Um, and we get given some information. We've got a spaceman on the moon launching himself upwards with an initial velocity. This sounds like true that. 4.7 and reaches a height of 6.7 so find the acceleration due to gravity on the moon so it looks to me it's just like a suvac question just a slightly bizarre suvac question to it so, oh, i already know the answer there it is so here's the guy um he's st stood on the moon and oops that's my worst picture ever again i'm gonna have to get used to this if i'm going to do this regularly so there's my guy stood on the moon and he launches himself upwards and when he does so, we've got some certain information. It looked like a Suvac question. Let's see if it is. Let's go back. We've, his initial velocity is 4.7 meters per second. Um, he reaches a height. Now, one thing you need to know, you reach your height, your maximum height is implied here when you're, you stop moving upwards. So at some point, his, his um, velocity up and down is zero. This is what we're after. And I think it tells us at a height of 6.7. So we don't know the time it takes him, but we know this is 6.7. So if I use that equation, this looks like v squared equals u squared. Remember, you're meant to know these, but they are in the formula book for you to help you. v squared equals u squared plus 2as. That means I get naught squared is naught equals 4.7 squared, whatever that is, plus 2 times the a times the 6.7. So I need to do 4.7 squared on the calculator. 4.7 squared, it says, is 22.09. And that is equal... Oh, sorry, that's naught equals... Because um, I'm just following this equation. Plus, but 6.7 times 2 is 13.4. So that's 13.4a. And so by definition... I'm moving the 22.9, uh, not 9 over, I'll get 13.4a equals 22.09. a, therefore, is the 22.09 uh, divided by the 13.4. And on my calculator, I get 1.648, rounding that. Now, bear in mind, when I'd done this, actually, that should have been a minus sign. I ignored it because I knew what was coming, but really, that's a minus sign. So if I just slide a minus sign in here, and I get minus 1.65 meters per second squared. So the big question is, why is it a minus, and why is it over here not say a minus? And that's simply because, of course, the he moves initial direction was moving up. The gravitation is pulling him down again, and therefore we you know, the, the gravitational acceleration towards the the moon is indeed 1.65. So minus 1.565 is technically correct but 1.65 is is fine as well now your job um an answer to this is on online we're going to post the questions for you to see and also the answers for you to see so exercise 21d page 487 that's the um uh we're going to put it into a word document so dig out that word document off moodle um and with moodle then uh, you should find those. Now, uh, I'll need to put a homework on for you as well. So have a look at that homework. Um, uh, hopefully you can do it. I'll email all the instructions out. But on the whole, I think that's a, a, a nice lesson to start with. I don't think it's too complicated and you should find it fine. So best of luck and remember to contact me. My address, email address is colin.mccure at stthelens.org.uk. You should have that. Miss Stanley and uh, Miss Frovine are also available. I saw Miss Frovine answering some emails this weekend. Um, so feel free to get in contact. It's weird times, but hopefully with, with these lessons, you'll be able to uh, crack on and get on with them and cope with them, and it shouldn't be a problem. All the best.